Hey everyone. How are you all doing? Live on Facebook. Are we live? Yes, we are. Good, I'm very good. Let me know where you're watching this live stream from. Hey Laura. Hi Alex. It's late for you in the US. I'm not sure what time it is over there. But if you need to go to bed, just watch it back. It will be saved on our Facebook and Instagram so you can watch it back. <clears throat> Hey Laura, we're good. Hope you are doing well. Yeah, we are still in lockdown here for another um, four or five weeks, I think. And um, as of Thursday morning, it's Monday here now, as of Thursday, we have to wear masks like the rest of the world up until now. Uh, they, they were saying there is no need for us to wear a mask and now they're saying if you don't wear a mask you have to pay a fine so um, we're going to wear a mask from Thursday every time we go out to a supermarket or something so I'm thinking I'm probably gonna do my shopping online have it delivered for free and I'm gonna try not to leave the house because <clears throat> I get very claustrophobic wearing a mask, so I'm not looking forward to that at all. Hey Paul, hey Matt, hope you guys are doing well. Hi Felix. Ah uh, yeah, Laura, how was the cube? Um, I live in Adelaide, South Australia, and we don't have to wear a mask. Yeah, in Victoria, I think they announced that, I didn't even know because I don't watch the news, but one of my friends told me last night that uh, from midnight on Wednesday in Victoria, you have to wear a mask, otherwise you have to pay a $200 fine. Um, it's interesting that you guys in Adelaide don't have to do that. It's just weird. Hudson was there too, awesome. Oh yeah, I think I saw that um, on Hudson's story. He was at the cube. I was feeling jealous because I haven't done a cube for five months now. It's ridiculous. Um, all right. So for those of you who may not know who I am or you've recently started following AV, just quickly, my name is Asal. I'm the founder and director of, uh, well, co-founder and director of Anonymous for the Voiceless or AV. Um, we're an animal rights organization and we focus on street outreach. We show people footage from what happens to the animals in the meat, dairy and egg industries. We have conversations with the public about veganism um, we also have workshops and training um, that we offer to vegans that want to become an activist. Um, and our campaign is called Cube of Truth. We've got over 700 chapters now around the world which hold um, cubes. 
which is what I just explained, showing people what happens to the animals and then having a conversation with the public, helping them if they want to be vegan, giving them the information and also encouraging vegans to become active and speak up for the animals. So that's what AV does and this is just the hangout and Q&A. So I'm here to answer any questions you might have about veganism or activism. And we've got about 90 minutes together so you can start sending your questions through and I'm going to try and respond to as many questions as I can. <laughs> Jenna said, I've got two kittens, rescue kittens, and I've named them Asal and Paul. <laughs> Jenna, you have to send me a photo, please. <laughs> I have to see. That's so cute. I would love to see their photos. Little cuties. Good morning to you in Denmark. Hello to you in California. Irene said, for medical reasons, if you can't wear a mask, you can go to a doctor and get a letter to be exam. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, well, that's really useful. Thank you. I mean, I'm trying to train myself to work on my claustrophobia because it's not good. But um, yeah, I've had, I've had incidents where I was forced to wear a mask at a hospital or something. And actually, it was a, right at the start of the coronavirus thing. Um, I went to the ER, ER because I thought I was having a panic attack or anxiety attack or something. And I get there and the first thing the nurse does puts a mask on my face and I had a full on panic attack that lasted two weeks. I had panic attacks all day for two weeks after that. So just thinking about wearing a mask makes me feel really anxious. I might, I might go and talk to my doctor about that, but um, yeah, I just need to work on that. I don't know why I'm so claustrophobic. Hey Paola. Yeah, that's really cute. That's so sweet. I need to see the little kitties. Um, hi from Melbourne lockdown. <laughs> it's getting a bit ridiculous. Just love watching you, such a positive individual love from India. Thank you. Someone said, what about wearing the mask in the cube? Well, the cubes that have been operating during the lockdown, well, not lockdown, but I guess maybe in some areas, lockdown is not as bad as here. Like here in Melbourne, you can't have a gathering, um, public gathering at the moment. But in some areas, like Laura was saying last night, they had a cube. Um, it depends on your local law. So if your government is saying for public gatherings, you have to wear a mask and you have to do social distancing, then you have to do it because we don't want you to get in trouble and you have to pay a fine. Um, some areas you can't even have a cube. And uh, yeah, I don't know if there, there are any chapters that are operating without the need to wear a mask or anything, let me know. But I'm pretty sure most people who are attending the cube now are wearing a mask and they are um, they're doing social distancing and they have like sanitizers and things like that um, Laura said the mask get awfully hot we have to wear them at the cube yeah that's what I thought um, so you wear the mask while you're standing in the cube I, I would imagine that you're wearing it under your mask under your AV mask which I can only imagine how hot that would be. So respect to everyone who's doing that, standing in the cube. And then when you're doing outreach, again, you're supposed to have a mask on. Um, I wonder if, if you guys have had any issues in terms of like communicating with the bystanders. I mean, usually it's fine. You can still hear someone behind the mask, but it just makes it a bit awkward the conversation.
Oh, you don't wear them when they go into the cube? Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, I guess unless somebody gets extremely close to them. And you're doing social distancing with the cube, right? They're not standing shoulder to shoulder, I'm assuming. We're having a cube this week in Adelaide and we're not wearing the mask. Oh, that's so cool. I'm so jealous. I wish I could be in Adelaide right now. Yeah. All right, let's get started. Hi, Mia. Thank you for joining me. Um, yep, I'm going to start taking questions. This is not a question. Uh, just wanted to thank you for inspiring me and spreading the word about veganism. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for your comment. Somebody said, how long have you been vegan? I've been vegan since 2013. So seven years I've been vegan. Just over seven years. Yeah, under that guy, Fox mask would be really weird, like wearing another mask. That's why I thought that's what you're doing. So I thought it would get really hot and steamy. Um, but then at the same time, if, if you're supposed to wear masks in public, then I wonder if that's going to cause an issue if you're not doing it. We've had all of our restrictions taken away, so there is no problem here at the moment. Uh, you guys are lucky in Adelaide. <clears throat> um. Alex, I can't see your first comment. So, I, uh, Alex said, I live in a remote area two hours away from the major city, work for the military. I'm trying my best to be vegan and encourage others. See, I can't see the rest of it. And then Alex said, how can I do more to help? I feel strongly that I'm not doing enough. Um, so what you can do well, you're already trying to educate others about veganism, which is great. You're basically doing activism. Um, another thing you can do, you said that you don't live near a major city, so I'm assuming there are no cubes around you. But if your town or the area that you live in is big enough, um, you think or you know of at least a few other vegans that would like to get active and do a cube, you can send us an email to join at j o i n at anonymousfortevoices.org and you can start your own chapter in your area um, even if you've got only a couple of people that want to join you in the beginning that way you can start doing cubes um, i mean depending on whether you're in lockdown or not at the moment but if you are after the lockdown you can start running cubes you can educate people like that um, Keep doing what you're doing. If you're educating people at work, that's great. And also you can do some activism online in your free time. So you could start making posts on your social media, making videos. Um, you can help with responding to comments on you know posts that we put up or other pages that have posts. And then you've got all these non-vegans commenting on it. So you can go have conversations with them. You can basically outreach them online. That's another way of doing activism. Um, but yeah, keep doing what you're doing. 
The thing is, the mask, like the AV mask will, sure, will cover some areas, but then the mouth bit is actually open and the nose. So, I mean, if you were to be in close contact with someone and, I don't know, they coughed or something. Um, I mean, there is a smaller risk, obviously, because you still got your face covered, but um, I was also thinking from a legal point of view, if the police shows up and they're checking to see if everyone's got a mask on, I don't think they're going to be satisfied with the AV mask. You've got to have the proper mask, I, I think. So that's another <clears throat> thing to keep in mind. Paul said, do you have anything to do with Animal Justice Party? No, I don't. Um, not a question like the color of your hair, by the way. Thank you. I like it too. I'm not vegan. Am I a bad person? Um, I wouldn't say you're a bad person. I'm, I would say that your actions are bad your actions are causing unnecessary harm and suffering to others and that is wrong so you can be you can be a good person and do bad things right so if you didn't know and you have been a non-vegan for 20 30 40 years um you didn't know better but now that you do know um, you're here on a vegan page on a live stream and you're asking this question so I'm assuming you know about animal abuse and so now that you do have the information it's completely your responsibility to take action for it so if you continue supporting these evil industries then yes it's bad because you're supporting something that you know is harming others and you're making the choice to continue supporting it Stephanie said, what I'm doing now as a form of activism is I bring empty packages of vegan products of food I have really enjoyed to the attention of store managers, asking them to order it, promising to purchase. That's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, we have, to, we have to keep supporting those products, right? We have to keep buying those products and create demand for it. Um, otherwise, they're just going to remove it. Um, although I'm not a big fan of processed food but sometimes I do go shopping and I get like whatever new cheese is out there or ice cream or whatever it might be um, because I don't want these companies to stop um, producing these items and I've noticed recently for example here in Australia Domino's Pizza had introduced like a whole vegan range I think it was last year and it was insane like they had 10 different pizzas, they had vegan ham, bacon, uh, I think even salami um, or pepperoni, whatever. And they had like a vegan beef. Um, so it was like multiple options and vegan cheese, obviously, vegan garlic bread, all of that. And now you go in and they've only got a few options for vegans and they've removed all of the plant-based meat options. And I wonder if that's because vegans didn't support it enough so obviously if you're not ordering enough then they're gonna think well it's not worth getting all this um items because 
they go bad, we don't end up using it, so we might as well just have like one or two vegan options for in case. And it's gonna be like, probably it's gonna be the most boring options, it's just a veggie pizza, maybe with just vegan cheese. But um, same thing happened with Pizza Hut here. They introduced new vegan pizzas and now they don't have it anymore. So it's just really sad because I was actually talking about this to um, some friends last night. I was thinking, one is, well, people don't support it enough, so when there's not enough demand, it makes sense from a business point of view that you remove those items. But I was thinking also maybe another thing here is um, when vegans order something and the business makes a mistake, so it sends out the wrong item, adds like dairy cheese or something, I was thinking, I wonder how many vegans react. I'm guilty of that too. In the past, it's happened where I call them crying and screaming. Um, but now I've got a bit of a different approach. So I just think maybe sometimes because of the reaction that they get from vegans when there is a human mistake, they will be like, oh, it's just easier if we don't have anything advertised as vegan because we don't want to deal with it um because vegans just make a fuss or like i don't know i don't know it's just a guess but i'm thinking you know when we go to non-vegan businesses even supermarkets and we buy an item and either we make a mistake we don't read the ingredients or they make a mistake let's just let's just be very effective in the way that we deal with it and just probably i would say do not boycott that business because they made a mistake just give them a second chance and go back to them just be more clear about your order for example recently there's a store that we go to sometimes for people that live in melbourne Pran convenience store is like a 24-hour convenience store um it's like my happy place they've got lots of vegan options and um it's 24 hours open so it's happened when we went there at 2 a.m so I was there last week, I think, and um, we got a few, like we like trying new chocolate, ice cream, whatever snacks are out there um, every now and then. So I got these little chocolate things and I read the ingredients multiple times and I thought it was vegan. We bring it home, before opening it, I read it again and it had pearl extract in it. I was like, what the fuck is a pearl extract? So we didn't touch it, we took it back a few days later and we said, cause they know the you know, we go there all the time. So I said, can you take this back? I don't want this. And they just took it back, you know, um, because it wasn't open. But even if it was, you know, you can just take it back, especially if it was your mistake, like this time was my mistake. But even if you order something and they put animal products in it, sure, you don't want to pay for it. It's disgusting that, you know, that, that order was created, that demand was created, but let's just do what we can with it and move on because these businesses have maybe 5% vegan demand or something, maybe even less, you know, like pizza places and burger joints and things like that. How many people order vegan options? So we need to keep ordering from them if we want to see more vegan options on the menu and if we want to see more vegan products at the supermarket. Um, and I like that idea of you know going back and giving them feedback i do that all the time as well i go back and i say you know that new whatever was really good like make sure you stuck it again or i keep asking for certain things like when ben and jerry's came out with their vegan ice cream first i was there once a week and i was like when are you gonna get it so especially if you have like a local store um that you want to support then yeah keep keep communicating with them and keep telling them what you want and keep creating the demand because that's the only way that we're going to have more vegan products on the shelf. Yeah, Laura, I agree. Vegetarians are the worst. I have to say vegetarians are more difficult to deal with than just carnists because vegetarians have this sense of self entitlement. They think that they um, they are already doing something good. They feel like they don't really need to change, and that makes it very difficult to get through to them. So I completely agree with you. Yeah. 
No, it wasn't pizza. <laughs> it wasn't pizza. This shop is called Pram Convenience Store, which is a convenience store. So they have all the uh, vegan snacks, like vegan chocolate, vegan ice cream. I would usually go at 2 a.m. for ice cream. <laughs> Not now, but um, years ago I would do that. Not anymore. Uh, maybe once or twice um, a month I might go there just to see what new items they have. But um, yeah, like they have vegan, all the vegan meats and vegan snacks, things that you can't get at like Coles and Woolies and things like that, basically. So many comments. All right, I'm gonna use the question option in the bottom. I already responded to this one. I'm only 12, so what can I do? You're 12, the first thing you can do is you can go vegan right now. So from today you decide that you do not wanna support animal cruelty anymore, meaning you're not gonna eat anything that comes from an animal, you're not gonna wear their skin, you're not gonna buy products that are tested on animals, you are not going to go and support places like zoos. And the next step would be for you to educate other people. So uh, you might have seen a documentary, you might have had a conversation with a vegan, you might have walked past the cube, whatever it was that helped you make the connection, get your friends and family to do that recommend um, documentaries and talks that they can watch. Um, take them to a cube if you can. Um, have a conversation about veganism with them. Tell them why you have made the decision to stop supporting animal exploitation. And continue to educate yourself because you might think that you know everything about veganism, but there are um, certain aspects of veganism that usually gets lost. Um, people usually ignore it, like horse riding, like um, eating honey. You know things that people don't necessarily know about because they're just not thinking about it being a non-vegan so continue educating yourself on this keep watching our live streams on av's page keep looking at the posts that we make we cover all different aspects so keep educating yourself and start doing activism so the first step is to be vegan the second step would be to become active and speak up for the animals so you want to <clears throat> Um, you want to spread the message about veganism um, in a way that people can relate to. So you said you're 12, you can talk to your friends at school and, you know, family members and you just basically explain what happened when you decided that you no longer want to support this. You talk about what happens to animals in the dairy and egg industry, for example. You explain what... Um, um, makes honey non-vegan for example you explain the leather um, the wool etc um, industries that people supporting so yeah basically you just educate other people around you and that's what you can do as a 12 year old and if you are living in a city where there's a cube operating make sure you join us there's no age limit um, if you're not sure you can go on our website cubeofshoot.com and you can see all the chapters in there and then you can see if there is one nearby yeah I know Andy um, he is really cool yeah I hope that they can um, they can create some change some positive change for the animals that way yes horse riding is a big one um, I want to share this with you because it pissed me off the last few days um so a while ago i posted a video about horse riding i explained why it's unethical and it's basically animal exploitation and the amount of comments i've got from not just non-vegans from vegans people that call themselves vegan and they try to justify this as if their life depends on it like they are really trying to justify horse riding and um you know and they continue to call themselves vegan and i just i was thinking 
how disgusting is this that you get all the other aspects of veganism but when it comes to horse riding um you just don't get it because what you're just so selfish that you think you want to ride an animal as entertainment and you don't see that that's wrong um and i was thinking no wonder why the movement is where it is no wonder like we're still not even being taken seriously because these are people that call themselves vegan and they're working against us they're working against the animals so it's like how can we succeed when people from within the movement are working against the animals this really makes me angry because it just um makes me lose hope sometimes you know and um yeah last few days i actually ended up blocking a couple of people because um they were saying they're vegan they were just defending it defending horse riding and they they were just going oh i was happy to go back and forth and try to just you know logically explain it to them but the funny thing is just like non-vegans they were getting so aggressive and that's when I block people. If someone is being continuously disrespectful, that's when I block them and that's what happened. But it was just very sad to have that experience with vegans. So for the 12 year old that asked about activism, Paula suggested you can get active in your school system, creating veg clubs and requesting plant-based food options. There you go. That's really cool. Should vegans work at non-vegan establishments? Um, well, I can't say no because what are you going to do otherwise? Well, you do need to work so that you can make money so that you can survive. So yeah, I think you should. Like if you work for a non-vegan business, it doesn't make you any less of a vegan. I know it's not ideal, but the number of vegan jobs are very limited. And if we can get a job in a vegan company uh, or an organization, I think that's a dream job. That would be ideal, but the options are very limited. So if you now are working for a company that is not vegan, then so be it. Just try to save money and um, keep looking for jobs in a vegan in business or if you can start working on you know creating your own business but for now it is what it is we do live in a non-vegan world so to make money if you have to work at a non-vegan restaurant or whatever it might be then as difficult and disgusting as that will be to for example serve dead bodies of animals i guess we would have to do it i used to when i first went vegan i used to work um yeah so first when i went vegan i used to work in a catering job i was a catering manager for this company and um i sometimes had to personally prepare the food as well so i would be working with animal products and um it was disgusting i did that i think for a year or so and then i moved on to my next job which was interpreting which was great because sure i was working with non-vegan companies but there was no direct animal abuse involved um i was just interpreting and i was working as a contractor so i was just basically working for myself and then i created av with paul and now i'm so lucky that i don't have to go back to working for a non-vegan company for me if it does come down to that for whatever reason if i don't have a job with av anymore i would look at starting my own business whatever it might be even if it's an online business, I don't need to make $10,000 a month, whatever it is, as long as I can survive. Like that's my personal um, value. I don't want to go back to a non-vegan job, but I wouldn't judge you harshly if you do choose to do that because like I said, the options are very limited. <clears throat> Laura said, this is about horse riding. How would they like someone riding on their backs? People who support horse riding just don't get it. I know, they don't get it. This particular person 
said, um, oh, you have no fucking idea what you're talking about. I have been working with these animals my entire life. And she said, I trained them and I gained their trust. I was like, oh, that sounds familiar. I've heard that from farmers. They gained the trust of the animal and then they stabbed them in the throat. And she got so offended. And I said, well, the only difference is that you ride these animals. You don't stab them to death, but you're still gaining their trust so that you can ride them so that you can use them. What do you get out of that? If, the, if you're doing it for the animal, just leave them alone. They go for a run. They get their exercise, right? People are so selfish and, and this pisses me off because even as a vegan, it's like there is some kind of a limitation to your human supremacy. You can't see beyond that. You can't just, there is like a limit. You can't cross that line. Your um, veganism or your idea of veganism doesn't apply to all animals. It's, it's exclusive to chickens, pigs, and dogs and cats and fish and cows and, you know, it doesn't include horses or bees or... <sighs> pisses me off. I really appreciate your beautiful messages and comments, by the way. I'm not going to read all of them, but I see them all. Well, I think I see most of them. And I really appreciate them. This one I already responded to. And this one I already responded to. <clears throat> All right, let's see if there are any relevant questions. Can diabetic people become vegan? Yes, of course. Um, WHO has actually announced that um, a, a whole foods plant-based diet is the healthiest diet for anyone on this planet, regardless of their age, sex, um, health condition, allergies, whatever it might be. A whole foods plant-based diet is the healthiest. So a whole foods diet is it's funny because once i posted about whole foods and someone said i don't think we have it here in uk and they thought i was talking about whole foods the supermarket <laughs> whole foods diet means whole foods as in the food as a whole in the complete form so it hasn't been processed that's what it means whole foods so things like potatoes uh things like rice things like beans vegetables fruits nuts so anything that hasn't been processed for example um bread is processed so it's like wheat flour <clears throat> that has been processed mixed with other things um so you want to stay away from that if you want to stick to 100 percent whole food side or things like chocolate and um, potato chips or you know things that have oil and additives or um you know, all these plant-based meats or plant-based cheese options. So anything that has a long list of ingredients and especially has oil and processed sugar added to it and things like that, you want to avoid if you want to eat a plant-based, I mean, whole foods plant-based diet. 
And um, the other thing I wanted to say about a whole foods diet is that not only um, it can prevent certain conditions and diseases because is it is the healthiest diet. In many cases, it can actually reverse conditions. Um, a lot of the chronic conditions can be reversed if you're doing it right. So a whole foods diet is eating lots of greens, lots of veggies, lots of fruit, uh, lots of potatoes, um, you know, lots of nuts and seeds and beans. Anything that hasn't been processed, that is a whole foods diet for you, which is the healthiest. So if you've got diabetes, if you've got high cholesterol, if you've got a heart disease, whatever it is, this diet is the best diet for you. I had to resign from my job of 12 years as a cook because they didn't want to eat vegan and I couldn't cook dead animals after going vegan. Yes, I respect, I respect that decision. Um, yeah, like I said, I can relate to it because I was doing catering and I was working with animal products and every time it made me sick. So I can totally understand that. Oh, little Fabi. Give him a kiss for me, Paola. Summer said, what do you think about training companion animals to do tricks and to help you similar tasks to what service dogs would do, given that it gives them mental stimulation and they enjoy it? Um, it's interesting you bring it up because somebody asked me recently and I said, what kind of tricks? And they said, oh, like shake, shake my hand or whatever. And I was thinking if the dog sees that as playing and is obviously enjoying it and it's all reward based, sure. But to, to teach them tricks so they can help you, I don't think so. Like, what do you mean, to, to teach them tricks to get the remote control or something? I just think that's lame. Um, if you want to mentally stimulate them, there are so many ways that you could do that. Give them interesting toys, um, you know, take them out for a walk so that they can explore and they can interact with other animals. Um, I, yeah, I don't think that that's necessary. And I don't think that that's, um, What's the word I'm looking for? I, I think that's just selfish, let's just say that. I think it's just selfish to teach them tricks so they can help you. If you were just doing it for the sake of entertaining that animal and, and playing with them and interacting with them, sure. But again, to teach them a trick so they can help you, we're being selfish human beings, just like the ones who uh, try to justify horse riding, etc. So you're just trying to take something from the animal instead of you serving the animal for once. So that would be my response. Oh, the sun is out finally. Thank you. How can you cope with living with non-vegans? I actually just put up a video on my Instagram today about this. So I recommend you go and check that out. You gave me the push to be vegan. I love that. That just made my day. I'm going to pin it. Is vegan bread done the same way too? Uh, what do you mean by that? If you mean it is a process, yes, because flour is, pro is a processed product. I mean, I personally, I do eat whole foods for 
95% of the time I would say and um, I make an exception for uh, bread and the other thing I do eat is uh, pasta tofu as well some people some people think that tofu is still a processed food which is technically correct but I think it's still very complete in the way that uh, it's been processed so yeah I do make an exception for bread and pasta but I go for bread and pasta that has no oil so even though it's vegan bread um, the flour has been heavily pressed especially if you're getting white bread and that's why it's not as good for you it's so much better to eat just potatoes you know or rice but I love bread and that's why <laughs> I make an exception but I don't I don't eat bread every day but I might have a slice and I also love pasta I could eat pasta every day so yeah Why do you personally not have pets? That's a very interesting question. Um, ooh, this is getting very warm. Um, I did have a dog uh, when we started AV. Some of you know Nelly. She's a little princess. So Paul and I started AV in 2016 and then we moved to Thailand to work on AV full time. And when we decided to do that, I thought, well, it's not fair to drag her along because I knew it's going to be a lot of traveling you know when you're traveling with animals first of all here in Australia you can't travel with your animal uh, I know like domestic flights in the US are really cool because you can actually take your animal with you in the plane so if you want to travel with your animal you have to put them in a crate and you have to give it to them so they put the dogs in a separate section um, I thought it's very cruel to do that. Um, I thought that. Uh, you may not agree with me and that's fine. Um, because it was not necessary, I thought that would be really cruel because I'm going to be traveling all the time. And then every time you get to a new country, she would have to be in quarantine for two weeks. Um, so I just thought that's very selfish of me. And my goal was to build this animal rights organization in order to help millions of animals so i thought okay the, the best option here is to actually find her a new home um and i am blessed because i found the perfect family um the couple that adopted nelly are actually like my best friends now and um she has a better life that i could ever provide her because like I was at that time I was living in a tiny studio I would just take her out for walks but then she was for some time she was actually living on a big farm she had so much room to run around she had another dog to play with so and now I get to see her uh, when I'm in Melbourne like right now so I feel lucky I have sleepovers with her etc but it's like the perfect perfect situation for me and for her um, because it would have been very selfish to drag her with me and to keep traveling. Um, so that's my story with her. But the reason why I don't have any animals now is because, again, I travel a lot for my work. Um, this is the first time in the last four years that I actually have a rental. Uh, like I actually have a house, a, an apartment. It's my home. Uh, before this, uh, we, we were always living with other people or we were staying at Airbnbs or, you know, when you're always traveling, we were basically living out of my car. Um, everything was in my car and then we, we would come back to Melbourne, we would just rent a place for a few months and then we would take off again. So you can imagine that it's just very selfish to bring another individual into this mess. And even now that I've got this place for 12 months and my plan is to stay in Melbourne regardless of the um, lockdown, I'm very tempted to adopt another dog. But again, it's a very tough decision. I have to know that I can commit to staying in one place, having a base so that even if I was to travel for a bit, 
somebody can look after that dog otherwise it's it's not fair so to adopt an animal and taking them out of a shelter and not being able to give them the best life possible i think is selfish and that's why um i'm not willing to do that just yet um i also want to say you know i because i know some non-vegans say oh you vegans have pets and first of all i like to correct that word as well we shouldn't refer to our animal companions as pets because that means that we own them like slaves the word pet means that you own someone or something so let's just call them animal companions um and non-vegans try to say oh you vegans uh you have an animal at home and you probably feed them animal flesh so you're hypocrites and i just want to say all of these animals that are now in shelters around the world have been bred into existence by humans so we do have a responsibility to provide them um with a shelter to give them love to provide food etc so that's where i stand with this whole thing with domesticated animals like cats and dogs i think for people that have the opportunity and they can afford adopting animals as many as they can please do it um, but if you know that you won't be able to do a great job looking after them don't do it um, yeah so that's what i have to say about this Hey Rebecca. Very bright. All right, next question. What time is it? Some of these comments are so funny. I wish you could all see them. Uh, is having a pet an abuse of animal? I think I just uh, responded to that. I don't know what it is, but with the questions that you sent, um, I can't see the entire question if they're too long so keep them as short as you can because the last bit is usually cut off and I don't know why I can't see it lots of Spanish comments I'm still working on my Spanish okay Next question, what can you do if you can't afford to be vegan? It is very expensive. Um, I don't know if you just joined, but five, 10 minutes ago, I was talking about a whole foods plant-based diet, which means you just eat whole foods. So things like rice, potato, veggies, fruit, nuts, beans, lentils, black beans, all of that stuff. And, um, Tell me if that's not the cheapest food options in the area that you live because you would be the first person. <clears throat> Usually animal products are more expensive than the things that I just mentioned. If you're referring to vegan products like vegan ice cream, vegan burgers, vegan chocolate, first of all, you don't need to be eating those things to survive. So it's a choice. They're not essential. Um, Secondly, they're actually on par with the non-vegan version. So if you look at a vegan burger, it's usually about the same price as a non-vegan burger that was made of cow flesh. So it's actually usually the same. If it's not in your area around the same price, it could be because there is no demand for it. 
because you know the majority of the public is still not vegan so it makes sense that there is more demand for animal products the other thing is that animal products are subsidized by the governments anywhere in the world so um, regardless of where you live this is how it works so they would uh, subsidize things like meat dairy so that's why you get um, cow's milk for like one dollar that's exactly why otherwise if they were to remove the subsidies you would pay five dollars for that so that could be another reason why um, you might think vegan products are a bit more expensive because they don't receive the same subsidies but none of this matters because you go vegan for the animals and when you decide that animal cruelty is wrong and you don't want to participate in it you'll find a way you'll find a way to make it happen um, you learn how to cook you learn what to buy you learn where to do your shopping you'll find recipes uh, you will do your research so that you know you're doing it the right way um, all of that comes after you have decided to be vegan but whoever told you vegan food is more expensive, they were just fucking with you. Because it's not true. Uh, so Neil said, what about dogs that are used in airports to sniff uh, for foreign or illegal substances? Um, I'm not sure because your question, yeah, like what about it? What, uh, what do I think about it? I think that's animal cruelty. I believe that's animal cruelty, I don't think. Um, with the technology that we have now, surely there are better ways of finding drugs. So to use animals as an object, as a tool, um, that is the definition of animal cruelty, animal exploitation. And the way that they treat these animals um, is no different to animals that are treated in meat and dairy industries, you know, before they get killed. So their only purpose is to come out certain hours during the day and to sniff people's bags. And uh, the training that they go through is very cruel. And then when their job is done, they get taken to a little cage somewhere. Maybe they get one or two walks a day, I don't know. But um, the point is that that dog did not give permission to the officers to be used that dog is not working uh, it's like if i decided to go and work for the airport i i am deciding to do it and i'm working and in return i'm getting paid these animals did not give us permission we're just using them and we don't need to do that Nicole said, I did a big shop the other day, filled up the trolley for 34 pounds. Veggies, beans, pasta, rice, sauces, etc. Super, super cheap in places like Aldi and I don't know what that other thing is. Yeah, Aldi is really cheap. But um, regardless of where you live in the world, your main supermarkets, like here we have Coles and Woolies, we do have Aldi in America. Maybe Whole Foods is a bit more expensive, but you can go to Trader Joe's or wherever you live. You just go to the same supermarket. You don't need to go to a specialty store. You go to the same supermarket. You go to the same aisle. Instead of grabbing cow's milk, you just grab soy milk or oat milk. It's as easy as that. And like I said, the prices are actually the same. Paul and I did an experiment. Last week we went shopping we went into the milk aisle and we were looking at cow's milk. The cheapest brand that they had at Coles was $1.40 or something, $1.25 maybe. And the soy milk that they had, the cheapest soy milk that they had was actually $1.15. So it was actually 10 cents cheaper, just to make a point. It's actually cheaper a lot of times. So, But even if it was more expensive, I explained why. Um, Paula said language is so important I even feel strange now saying my dog even though when people refer to their kids or family they say my mom my baby etc but I think I feel like uh, that because 
I'm hyper aware about animal ownership. Yeah, Paula, I totally agree with you. I actually had this conversation with Paul once and he was saying the same thing, but I convinced him that just like you're my partner, I don't, I don't own you as a partner, but you are my partner or my mother, like he said, uh, my daughter. Um, so yeah, I don't think that language is bad or incorrect. I think that's um, you trying to be like, you know, super accurate and productive by trying to avoid that. But yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that, to be honest, I think. Um, just like you refer to your partner or your boyfriend, your girlfriend as my boyfriend or my friend. And that doesn't mean you don't, that doesn't mean you own them. I think it's the same thing with animals. You can say my dog or my puppy or my, my cat or a lot of people say my children, my daughter, my son. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think that makes it, that makes it um, like an ownership. I don't, I don't think. All right, I just got cut off on my Instagram, so waiting to join again. I've got another half an hour. Yes. Yeah, we just got cut off because um, when we reach one hour, it gets cut off. And I have to go live again. Um, next question. Since we're on the topic, is seeing eye dogs animal abuse? Yes. We have made um, multiple posts about service, service animals in the past. Um, so dogs at the airport that are used by the police or the airport officers or whatever they're called immigration. Um, same as um, service dogs, whether is, um, the animal is a seeing eye service animal, um, emotional, um, what is it called? Emotional support, like people that have anxiety or something and uh, they have a service animal. Um, yeah, whatever it might be. Again, with the technology that we have now, surely we have devices and we have technologies that can replace the actual sentient individuals and they could be actually more accurate maybe um so yes using an animal for any purpose is 100 percent animal abuse when you think about the term animal um sorry the term service animal service means you're serving so the, the dog is there to serve you as an individual um, like I personally have experienced with really bad anxiety and panic attacks as I was talking about earlier I would never think that I have the right to go and adopt a dog actually you don't adopt I'm pretty sure with service animals you have to buy them because they train them specifically to be service animals um, and the training that they go through you have no idea what they do to these dogs so you go and get one of those animals and you bring them home so so that when you leave the house, you don't have an anxiety attack. Maybe surely there are other ways that you could, you could work on that. I personally could never understand how an animal becomes a server to me. The only way that it would work is if I adopt these animals and I give them a home, I provide food and they're free to do whatever they can, they want to do. I mean, as long as they're safe. So I'm not going to leave the door open so that they can go get run over because I'm their guardian. But to take anything from an animal, to use them for my purpose, yes, that's animal abuse. I did already, Sunil, I, I did respond to your question about airport dogs. If you missed it, 
you can watch this live stream back. Laura said one thing that sucks is if you purchase a coffee with soy milk, uh, soy milk, almond milk, oat milk, most places charge you extra, not right or fair. Yeah, I agree, that sucks. Uh, I think soy is no longer an extra charge. Well, here is not, most places. Uh, you usually have the option of getting cow's milk or soy milk would be the same price, but if you wanna go for oat milk, I think even almond milk in some places, you don't have to pay extra, but oat milk, you have to pay extra. And then I've noticed some cafes have their own like homemade like macadamia nut milk or oat milk or whatever it's like a bit fancier so they charge extra for that which is understandable but if you go to a regular place like starbucks it should be the same price i agree and i'm pretty sure it is but i could be wrong i think it's for soy milk it is but for a very long time i used to find that annoying and unfair Um, I appreciate you guys staying on top of the comments because sometimes I miss them. Um, how do you deal with apathy with family or friends and how would you respond when they call you close-minded for saying that your relationship with them will be strained as long as they keep abusing animals? So that's two questions, right? So apathy with family and friends is no different to ap apathy from like a stranger on the street. I don't see how that's any different. Um, if someone says, I don't care about the animals, the only response I have for that is, when did you stop caring? That could be my mother, it could be my brother, it could be my friend, it could be a bystander at a queue. So I see that like as the same thing. I don't think that well, I don't have a different approach for my family and friends when it comes to this. Um, so somebody that says, I don't care, so they have no apathy for the animals, um, that's all you can say. When did you stop caring? And, you know, if somebody really doesn't care, then that's it. There's nothing you could do or say to change their mind because they are, either they're sociopathic, so they don't even, like, register pain and suffering, or um, or they're lying to themselves because they don't want to change, they don't want to face the truth, or they are just not ready. And if someone's not ready, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't force that process to go faster. No matter how good of an outreach or an activist you are, it really always comes down to that person being ready to, to see the truth, to hear the truth, and to take a step towards changing. So that's what I would say. When did you stop caring? Um, and the second part about friends and family saying um, you're closed-minded if you wanna cut your relationship, um, cut ties with them. Um, <laughs> you're asking someone who literally doesn't care about what people think or say. Um, if my my friends and family want to attack me because I'm doing the right thing, I will just say adios. Like I don't have time to, if I have already explained to them why these are my boundaries, these are my values, why I do what I do and why I can't be around you anymore, why I need to end this relationship. If I have already done that, they're not going to negatively impact me by saying you're closed-minded or narrow-minded or stubborn or irrational whatever that's fine that is your point of view and you're entitled to it 
stay away from me. That would be my response because it's not an easy decision to make to cut your family off or to stop talking to your friends. It's a huge decision. So surely if you've got to that point and you've reached that conclusion, you have done a lot of thinking and you have processed this. So you know that's the right thing for you to do. So if you have got to that point and they want to poke at you by saying you're, you're close-minded or you're irrational, then you know actually that you're um, you're doing the right thing because you're getting to them. So, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. I hope that helps, Jacob. Uh, Sunil, lab rats would be the same. Lab rats would be... Um, and it's not always rats yeah it is rats mice dogs um monkeys and rabbits that are used in animal testing so it could be for medication uh it could be for sometimes for food it could be for anything so um when it comes to this i mean we have talked about this many times when it comes to medication if that medication is necessary for you as an individual, even if it was tested on animals and you have to take it, then that's a decision for you to make. If you can justify it to yourself, then you're going to take that medication that was tested on animals, whether it was tested on mice or it was tested on dogs. Um, but beyond that, using animals, whether it mice, rats, rabbits, doesn't matter what animals, using animals for um, testing and experimenting, um, you know, dissection at schools, etc. It's completely unnecessary and cruel. Um, Laura said, unfortunately, it's extra for soy. I think maybe just for once. We're lucky here in Australia because I'm pretty sure soy is the same price in many places. But yeah, I love oat milk as well. Oat milk, uh, especially from Oatly, it's very smooth. I never used to drink coffee, by the way, and recently I've become really into it. I even got myself like a coffee maker, uh, like the Italian style. I've got a f milk frother and all of that. But um, I only drink decaf because of anxiety, so. But yeah, I drink coffee now. All right, we've got about 15 minutes, so let me know if you have any questions. How do you block someone in here? Block, block, block. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, the thing is with animal testing, uh, if we're talking about medication or makeup and things like that, it's been proven that it's unnecessary and it's not necessarily effective. So uh, many companies that operate at the moment, makeup, toiletries, even medication, uh, as in not like pharmaceutical medication, but you know, like um, supplements that you can buy that are vegan, etc. So those companies, what they do is they have human volunteers and that's how they run their testing. So they don't, if, so, okay. So that's proof that you don't need to use animals to do the testing because you can just have human volunteers and you can do the testing like that. Um, and also another proof is that many countries have now banned animal testing. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard this is happening in UK now. Um, and another country in Europe um, 
was it Denmark? I can't remember, but um, India has also banned animal testing to my knowledge. So if animal testing is banned in a country completely, what does that tell you? It's unnecessary. It's outdated. Well, we don't have 365, Paola. Isn't that the Whole Foods brand? I think the best oat milk we have here is Oatly. Ah, uh, Lucas, you're hilarious. You're so funny, oh my God. What's your opinion on keeping animals like reptiles and fish who don't benefit from living with humans? Um, it's interesting. I had a conversation with a friend yesterday about reptiles and I was saying, to my knowledge, if you have reptiles like a snake at home, um, they do eat flesh. And what people do is they don't just go dumpster diving to get the flesh that was thrown out by the supermarket. Um, I have heard, because I I don't have this experience, but I have heard that these animals actually need to hunt. That's why they bring them live animals. So it could be insects or it could be like a small mouse or something. I don't know. Uh, let me know if you know more about this, but I think that's, um, that's the case with reptiles. So I was thinking, like as a vegan, if you're doing that and you think it's okay to do that, you gotta you gotta think about it twice but your question is about animals like reptiles and fish who don't benefit from living with humans um again if you have rescued a reptile or a fish or any other animal if they're rescued then sure you want to you, you want to provide some some quality care to them right so if you can do that, yeah, look after them. If you can't do that, then don't rescue them. Don't, don't adopt them, don't bring them into your house. Um, and yeah, they don't necessarily interact with humans like, um, like dogs and cats would do, cats less so. But so I think it's really, if you're doing it, it's really just to help that, that individual. Again, if you can provide them that kind of care sure do it because these animals have been bred into existence so if you can rescue them then sure Cody said, is riding horses bad? I recommend you watching this back because we did cover that at the start. Oh, also, <laughs> now that you bring up Whole Foods, oh my God, their ice cream, their vegan ice cream is probably the best supermarket ice cream I've ever had. They had, I don't remember the name now, but they had one that was vanilla with some kind of berry sauce. And then they have the peanut butter chocolate chip. It's just the best. Like you guys are so lucky to have Whole Foods. You don't get that stuff here. Yeah pretty disgusting all right next question it's seriously hard not to sit with the family when eating and in India it's easier to go vegan than explaining to friends and family Okay, 
next question. Do you like dogs? I love dogs. I think dogs are angels. All animals really, but you asked about dogs. Help me be vegan. Um, you just need to be vegan. Stop making excuses. Stop acting like a little baby and go vegan. Stop paying for animal cruelty. How does being vegan feels? It feels like I'm not an animal abuser anymore. That's what it feels like. Um, what was the ice cream base? I think it was coconut, but I'm not sure. Maybe it was soy. Because they had, well, when I was there last time, which was last year, uh, 365, 365, whatever the home brand is for Whole Foods, they had like five or six at least different vegan ice creams, and one of them, I think, all of them were from different stuff. Like, I think some were coconut based, some were soy based. But that particular one I remember, I think it was either soy or coconut. It was just vanilla ice cream with uh, some kind of raspberry sauce. It had a long name, I don't remember it, but I can find it. Oh, uh, now I want it so bad. Um, how do you keep your peace when discussing veganism? When I'm talking about veganism, especially on outreach, I, and also online, I try to remove myself from the equation. So I just am here to speak up for the animals like an advocate. I'm not me representing myself as an individual, if that makes sense. I just want to be a voice for the animals. So if that person is being stupid, ridiculous, funny, whatever, I just ignore it. Um, I try to be as rational and logical as I can, even though they might be throwing the most ridiculous arguments at me. And um, I have a rule, whether it's online or at a cube I'm outreaching, I give you a certain amount of time to educate you, to have a conversation with you. But beyond that, if I am sure that you're not serious about this, if you're not taking it seriously, if you're just here to argue with me, or if you're just here to disrespect me, then I'm gonna walk away from that conversation. And I'm sure you guys have seen my one of my latest um, outreach videos that I posted recently, which was from New York, actually. It was from last year, but it was the last outreach conversation that was left from last year. Um, but that's an example. And then I've got another example from New York where there was this um, vegetarian photographer that approached me and wanted to work with AV. And I said, we don't work with non-vegans. And I had a quick conversation with him and I walked away. So my point is that I do walk away from people um, and the equivalent of that online would be, I would stop talking to them. So no matter how many times they message me or um, comment, tag me, I just ignore it unless it deserves a block and then I block them. But otherwise I just ignore them online and in person I just walk away from them. If they were being intellectually dishonest and it's obvious to me that that's happening or if they were being continuously aggressive, disrespectful uh, and violent, if they're being violent, I'm out, um, to me or to others. And that's another thing for me online. If it's happening to other people on my page, it's the same thing. If it happens repeatedly, then I'm going to block that person. Otherwise, if I'm having a conversation with someone and I'm doing outreach, 
within about five minutes I can tell if this person is serious or they're just taking the piss so that's when I walk away but that's really how I stay calm I think I just think well I'm here to do my job as an animal rights activist it's not about me if that person said you're an ugly skinny bitch or said you're fucking fat I don't I don't care because that's not why I'm here I'm not here to be liked I don't want to be popular um, I'm not here to be validated. I don't care. I'm just doing my job as an animal rights activist. And that helps me stay focused on the animals and not get upset with people's comments or reactions. So I'm able to actually stay calm throughout the conversation. Sometimes it's not, <laughs> it's not that easy, but yeah. I doubt that you just got blocked because you wanted to be an organizer. You use the word leader, which shows that you don't know what you're talking about, really. We don't use that word. But if you wanted to become an organizer, there's no, there's no reason why our team would have blocked you. I'm assuming that there's more to the story and you're just not telling me the full story. All right, a couple more questions and then we'll wrap this up. Um, oh wow, so many questions, which one, which one? Okay, next question. Would you raise a kid vegan? If I was to have children, yes. I wouldn't raise an animal abuser. If I live with the values that I have now, which is I'm anti-abuse, anti-exploitation towards animals, anti-oppression towards animals, as well as humans, etc. But we're talking about veganism, which is only about animals um, having their their right to live without being exploited and used and abused. So if I have that as a as a core value, surely if I was to have children, my children would have to be vegan. And then when they get older, if they chose to be an animal abuser, that's on them. But they're not going to be an abu animal abuser for as long as they're living under my roof. So that would be my approach. But, um, yeah, I don't have any plans of having children, so I don't have to worry about that one. I know of plenty of people that had, uh, so they, they went vegan when they were pregnant or even before they got pregnant and, and they were vegan throughout their pregnancy and then their little baby has been vegan. So if your question is like, is it safe? Again, going back to what WHO had to say about this, a, a whole foods plant-based diet is, is um, suitable for anyone regardless of their age. So you can raise a baby vegan and um, a toddler, a child, etc and I'll be the healthiest for them. Okay. Ah, oh, thank you, Paul. All right, I'm gonna take one more question from Facebook and one more from Instagram if you have any questions and then we'll wrap this up. Thank you for joining me, True Vegan. Um, again, I don't see why we would just um, 
refuse your application unless there is a legitimate reason, which I'm sure that the team would have explained. For example, if you're under 18 years old, that might be one reason. If you're not vegan, that might be another reason. But if you don't fit into those categories, then I'm sure there is a reason why your application was rejected. What if the kids are living at someone else's house? How do you cope with that and for them who is not vegan? Uh, I don't get the question. The kids are living at someone else's house? You mean if you have a child and your partner lives in a separate or your ex-partner lives in a separate house and they're living between two houses? Is that what you mean? Um, are all coconut uh, coconuts c collected by using monkeys? I saw a video and it's really cruel. Um, yeah, actually, I recently saw this article, um, and um, I've got a list of the coconut brands, coconut products that are ethical. But um, yeah, it's devastating. So all the coconut products that come from Thailand are unethical, unless you have confirmation from the company so if you're buying coconut cream coconut milk etc coconut water doesn't count because the process is different but if you buy coconut cream or coconut milk make sure the brand you're buying is ethical and they should have some information on their website um, you probably can also find this information maybe on Peter's website or somewhere um, they would have a list of all the ethical brands but um, yeah, all the coconut that comes from Thailand pretty much is unethical, unless you know, um, like you're sure about it. Um, I heard that in UK they banned or they removed all of those unethical brands from the main supermarkets, which is great. I think they should do that all over the world. Um, I know here in Australia, Nakula. Um, is completely ethical and organic um, they're all of their coconut products so I'm just gonna go for that from now on um, but there are multiple brands that you could be you could find um, everywhere in the world I'm guessing and they are ethical so make sure you look into it if you use lots of coconut cream like I do because I cook with coconut cream and coconut milk all the time I bake so I was shocked to see this information so they use monkeys because you know the coconut tree is quite high they train these monkeys and they send them up so that they will, um, they will um, pick the coconuts and throw it to the ground so they can collect them. Um, I mean, it's nothing new really. It's um, like any other form of exploitation and slavery that we have seen with animals. Um, it's kind of like the coffee that they produce by using possums or the, I don't know what the animal is exactly but I remember the first time I was in Bali we went on a tour and then they took us to this coffee chocolate and uh, well not chocolate cacao farm coffee farm and and tea farm and I was excited without knowing that this happens and then I see this little terrified animal in a cage and I'm like what what is happening here and then I learn about that coffee so they give the coffee beans to these animals that look like possums and they starve them so they have to only eat the coffee beans and then they poop it out and that is the coffee. So it's never ending, is it? Isn't it? It's just humans are just selfish.
Um, okay, so yeah, your question about, so if you're separated and your kids are living between your house and your partner's house, your ex-partner's house, I, um, I don't really know, like, legally speaking, what you can do about it, but, um, if your partner's not vegan and they don't agree to the kids being vegan, then you just want to work on your children. You want to educate them and you want to tell them why you're vegan, um, show them the information and get them to be vegan. So if they are vegan, then your partner cannot feed them animal products, right? By force. Um, but I would imagine, especially if they're younger and they're not 100% convinced, then they go to their house and it's like, oh, I can eat McDonald's here and I can eat like, I don't know, all this non-vegan chocolate or whatever. Um, so maybe if you can show them that you can eat everything vegan and provide those options for them, but also talk to them about how um, there is animal cruelty involved in all of those things. I find it easier to, to talk to kids about veganism because there is less of that conditioning, so they're more open to it. Um, so yeah, if you explain it to them, I wonder if, you know, if your children said, I, I want to be vegan, their mom is not going to force them to eat animal products, I don't think. But if that's not happening, then just have the rule of them eating vegan 100% when they're with you and not bringing any animal products into your house. And that's the best that you could do for now. Well, your children are your children as much as your exes. So they can't tell you not to educate them. I don't think that they have the right to do that. Copy, I can't even read that and I'm not gonna try to read it, Matt. It's disgusting, I just know that that's disgusting. Like what's wrong with just coffee? Why do you have to eat someone's poo? All right, last question. All right, I'm gonna pin this comment that Cody posted. If you wanna find out about the um, companies that don't use monkeys or do use monkeys for their coconut products, you can go on our Facebook on the live stream and you can see it. I just pinned the comment. <coughs> Let me just open it and have a look now. <clears throat> Oh, so there is like a long list of brands, companies that do not test, I'm sorry, do not use monkeys, I'm thinking about animal testing, do not use monkeys for their coconuts, to pick their coconuts. Um, yeah, there's so many different brands. Some companies didn't clarify and some companies, um, we know that they use monkeys so you can avoid them so yeah this is a really good list thank you for sharing that all right i think i'm gonna wrap this up
yeah I'm gonna wrap this up thank you so much for everyone <clears throat> that joined me if you didn't um, join me from the start you can watch it back later it will be on our Instagram and Facebook and I think I will see you in a week exactly so we're going back to doing these live streams once a week um, so one live stream with be would be a Q&A like this one and the next one would be an interactive workshop but instead of doing them twice a week I'm gonna go back to doing them once a week um, and yeah that's it all right thank you so much for joining me please stay safe and try to do as much activism as you can if you're still in lockdown like me um, if you have the opportunity to go to the queue use that opportunity I really miss doing outreach and being on the street so take advantage of that much love everyone take care